see that so I'm gonna move it a little bit over so you can see this green and we have a little bit of white or red so I'm gonna put some red here all right I also got like a whole bunch of sequins but at least I'm gonna walk away for a second because here I'm gonna write some yellow this is a really good job oh basic oh, fleshy color like a nice fleshy color okay, I'll use this fleshy color and then um some good old yellow good old yellow Let's not forget block, color block. So here's some yellow, some yellow here, just a little drop of that, and a little bit of yellow, a little bit of yellow here so you can see it. My color, the light's gonna go out in a second. Uh, then we have some black. Right there. Some black. And then from there, I'm going to go to some here, some black. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and make some nice designs. We have red and we have green, so let's go ahead and paint the majority of this beast green. Let's make it like um, in layers. So we're going to start off with the bottom layer. Oh, we don't got the little pinky. Okay, we'll see. We're going to do green. Little bit of green. Start off with the green. Okay, so green here. Green right here. Start with here. And we'll work the green right up here. I know the light's gonna go out in one second, and when it does, I'm just gonna pause the video and, and resume. So we have our lights in our timer, all our, fl our flowers and our plants. So we have that, so that way we can able to um, not have to turn the lights off. And, and because that, we actually find the plants grow much better when they have it on a timer. We do urban gardening here, and uh, we, we had for many years we had a plot of land that we were actually gardening. And as we were working on this land, we found that um, well, it was it was kind of like my wife's idea because you know me, I'm from New York, and well, I'm not originally, but I grew up here in New York, and you just kind of leave everybody alone. You know, I mean, you say hi on the train or something. Sometimes you get good conversations going, but for the most part, you just everybody just leaves everybody alone. You try not to you know, mess with people. So my wife saw this opportunity of land you know, not too far from our house, and she was like, "Gotta find out who the owner is. Gotta, you know, inquisit and find details about stuff." So she was able to find out who the owner was of the house not too far from here, uh, of the land that was just kind of sitting fallow that nobody was paying attention to. So she did that, and um, for like five years, we were able to like go over and do this thing called guerrilla gardening where you take like a plot of land and you work it but since you yeah, had permission it wasn't really guerrilla gardening it was more like permission gardening we call it urban gardening with kids anyway so we started doing that and it worked out really well because what happened we had some plants we took it to the queens county farm museum and we won some like uh, we won different plants we won awards for and we got us into the whole thing with growing stuff you know and i, I went to school for agriculture and for agriculture and animal science and plant science and stuff and so one of our responsibilities was to maintain a plot of land for um, a, a summer. So we had to take care of this thing. It was called a land laboratory. And in the land laboratory, we had to just make sure that this land laboratory was well taken care of. And we kept records of everything and made sure that the land itself was not only good, but, but you know, taken care of. And um, uh, then we had to keep records. And then at the end of it, we had food. Those are my kids screaming in the background. And we have, um, they're like watching TV or something. Uh, other than Chloe, Chloe's here making stuff with me here in the kitchen. And so what happens is like uh, we had to take care of land and we had to make sure that the ground itself was um, as well taken care of and irrigated and stuff like that. And we had to make sure that all the stuff that we were doing was documented 
so we can know how much you know we grow and how many things are growing. It was very robust and very like very very well done. I, I totally enjoyed it. Helped me out a lot. And then you know when I got home the next year, I just went to my backyard and just started working on that. We turned it into land, you know. But then it was before I was using a lot of Miracle Grow and stuff. And then so after that, you know, I just stopped using Miracle Grow. I stopped using Miracle Grow and tried to just do it without you know any of the additives like that. And it turned out really good because we started like learning about crop rotation and using different types of soil. And then I stopped for a while. And then um, and we could, you could put some glue gun on it. Once you have it at the end, just put a piece of glue gun or some nail polish, and it'll seal up. You know, if you want to seal it and not have it like, work um, against you. I'm talking about how to, how to end a seam. You know, could put some glue. And so, um, so we had to do that, and that was part of our summer assignment. And my a couple of years after that, uh, in my junior, year, junior to senior year in high school, I had to work on a dairy farm. And a dairy farm was where I learned about dealing with stubborn creatures called cows, and how cows are not only stubborn but they're super smart. And you know, we didn't know about that before. No one told you that cows are smart, and you just kind of have to figure that out and know that they're smart. And really, they kind of like to be respected, really, because they're. You know, they're able to carry all that weight on, that, on those little feet. But for the most part, though, it's one of those things where, you know, you're like, man, cows are cows are really intelligent. So what happened was, like, you know, um, um, I had to work with um, cows for for about um, a month. I don't know, about no month, but two months. And working with them, I learned about that, you know, one that they're interesting creatures. They're very smart. And not only that, they have... Um, um, they have really rough lives, you know, how they start off and, and how it ends for them. It's really rough times. And um, one of the things I thought about in terms of, like, life was, like, you know, I just, I liked cows. And um, I, I, I never, well, I had Vila once, and I was like, okay, you know what, I'm not going to do this anymore. And I haven't had Vila since. But it was like, I just thought about the whole thing with baby calves and how they, you know, their lives and and how they are, you know, taken from moms and stuff. And I know, it's just, you know, milk. How we get milk and stuff, you know, it's such a story. And so, you know, we we don't we 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 drink milk when we have to, but for the most part, it's like, you know, we find that you can actually find milk from other sources. You can get milk from like uh, almond milk. You know, we don't drink any soy milk. I want a piece of cake. Uh, Lukey, I'm on, I'm recording. And so, so what happens is like you know, just kind of painting this thing up here. I'm not sure you can see it, and I don't want to tip it over. And we have to put another base so that I don't paint the tablecloth. Oh boy! Big boy! I'm tired. Yeah? I'm tired. You got it. Okay, good. How'd you? Oh, okay, you figure out how to tie it. I'm gonna rest this here so I don't like paint the other side of the table. Oh goodness! Did I put paint in my things in the bottom of my thing? I said I did. No, I didn't. Okay, good. I did. I didn't. I thought I did, but I didn't. I did. Here, I'm gonna rest this here and have my paint palette over there. Mess up. Yep, those of you who know me, I've done this. I like painting. I painted fences, I've painted pictures, I painted people. I haven't painted animals yet, but I guess I painted pictures of animals. I painted on people, I painted on on fences, and I painted on a whole bunch of stuff. And I like it, it's really good. It's really kind of a very therapeutic thing for me. And I'm um, using a wide brush here, by the way, and a flat side to get as much as possible. I like painting. My daughter has, um, my daughters are very talented in the fact that they have the concept of, of colors and scale really done well. I, on the other hand, I just draw and do stuff that's very, very boxy and formulaic. All my animations and stuff, it's, it's kind of formulaic. I, I, I think what happened was... My thing, I, I, um, I had to go to kids, when they were drawing, they draw without any Kobe homeschool, and so they have any hindrances in terms of like styles and things like that, so they draw their own style. Because of that, they're able to communicate very well in, in words of um, art. For me, on the other hand, I have a lot of like training and a lot of things, and so because of that, it's like, you know, it's just one of those things where, you know, you're kind of, you're trained, and you have a lot of school. I'll be back in a second. And so you wanna you really wanna stick heavily to your training, you know? Because that's what kinda happens. Oh, is that what pant leg? 
I need it. Okay, next, so you kind of hang on to your train a lot, and so because of that, it's it's kind of hard and very painful, so it kind of goes against the creative process of trying to do something that's, that's free form when you've been trained to do, it's like like a ballerina or something, you know, they have been trained so much that that they they do it automatically, you know, they try and keep it done automatically how they do stuff. It was, um, there was like a, um, somebody was saying, I think I was watching, listening to NPR or something, talking about how when ballerinas fight, you know, they're, they're so good at what they do that when they fight with somebody else, they fight with other experts, that the normal people who don't know stuff will be like, wow, that's art, but they're actually like dissing each other with their styles, and they're insulting each other and calling each other names with their, their, their dances, you know, so they're kind of fighting, they're dance fighting, you know, calling each other names with how they kick and how they think, so they're picking on each other and they're fighting, when in fact that, you know, to other people who, to the untrained eye, it's, it's beautiful, it's artwork. But they're like, nah, we're calling each other names. <laughs> calling you a name, calling you a bad name, a curse word. And they're just like, wow, it's so beautiful, look at that. You know, I always wonder about that. You know, we talked about, like, um, when I was, like, um, going to uh, church building a lot, there was a time where you had a lot of things about rock music and about how rock music is bad and stuff, you know? And, you know, there's a lot of it that is bad, so uh, give them that. But they were talking about, like, you know, how rock music is just straight up from the devil. But I started thinking, like, you know what, a devil has different means of catching people. You know, so if, for example, your thing is classical music, you got you got demonic classical music, too. You know, you got stuff to catch you. You know, if, you're, if your thing is chocolate, you got demonic candy for you. You got any temptation that you have out there, there's a way to catch you in it. So it's like, you know, it's not a matter of just the thing itself. It's kind of like the Bible says there's nothing unclean of itself, but to anyone who considers something to be unclean, this, this becomes unclean. So, for example, if you think your foot is unclean, then your foot is unclean to you. Which means, like, you think it's a good thing, then your foot is unclean to you. But for a normal person, your foot by itself is not, your body is not evil. Your body might have evil desires inside of it, and you might have things that you have to kind of fight later. But for the most part, though, your body isn't evil. But it's really, as our mind, the Bible says, not what goes into a person that makes a person evil or wicked. It's what comes out of a person, out of our heart. Because out of our abundance of our heart, our mouth speaks. And usually a liar is somebody who lies, not just a million times, but once. If you lie once, you're a liar. That's biblically speaking right there. You lie once. So anyway, so back to um, my stuff. On the dairy farm, I learned about like dealing with um, cows. And like I said before, cows are stubborn. You cannot out muscle a cow. I mean, maybe some people they can grab by the horns and stuff and just throw down a bull and things. But for the most part, though, that's like, you know, you can't do two of them at the same time. You can't find a, a herd of cattle, a herd of, you know, cows. Maybe you can fight one, but, you know, what happens, you fight a bunch of things. So what happens, you, you learn very quickly what you can and cannot do with cows and how they don't, you know, they don't care that she had to be a certain place at a certain time. They're like, we're going to do what we want. So one of my jobs, I remember, on dairy farm was having to bring the cows back in. And if anybody knows about having to bring cows back in, cows are smart. They're super smart. And when they're smart, what they do is that they like to run. And they can run really fast. Really fast, which means faster than me. Really fast. So, so you have to be able to catch them. And so to catch them, you have to be able to outthink them. Because they, they're smart. So, okay, so... How do you think them? You have to think about, well, one of the things that tricks that we had at our sleeve was that we would corral them. We'd run at them. And when we ran at them, they would run in a different direction. I would have to kind of go and corner them. And in the process, we'd get them to go in the direction they wanted to go. What does that mean? It means this. For example, one time a cow was trying to crush me to death. It got up right next to me. And I was in the stanchion next to it. Uh, the stall next to it, I mean. And what it did was that it pushed all its weight onto me and into the bar next to the its stall. And I was just being crushed to death. I'm just dying here. And I'm thinking, I can't push this cow. I have no ability to push this cow. I'm like, what, 16 years old or 15 years old at the time? I was like, how am I going to move this little stinking cow? Right? So I'm thinking, okay, what am I going to do? So I had to kind of reach up over, reach up over, and I had to just um, tap the cow. Cap, tap the cow. And I guess it was a cow because it's a female cow. Uh, the males are called bulls. I reach over and tap her uh, on the other side, opposed to where I am. So I reach over her spine and tap her on the other side. And she's thinking I was ever there, because, you know, I guess you can't really feel that much when you're rubbing your hips into somebody. Like, you know, just kind of crushing somebody with your hips. So what happens is, like, you know, she thought I was on the other side. So she immediately went to crush me on the other side now. And so when she did that, I jumped out of the stanchion or the stall. And I was able to, and it was in the stanchion, I was in the stall, and I found that... I was able to survive another day because I didn't 
get killed. So that's good. Always good. And so um, the story goes. The story goes. It's like one of those things where, you know, um, cows are brilliant. They're actually pretty smart. Some cows can you can train them to do stuff. You can train them to do different tricks, and you can train them to um, pay attention to you in ways that you know most animals can't. You know, there was one lady who was very smart with uh, how she trained her cows, and I train your dragon, I train your cow, and so she was able to do that, and she did a really good job of teaching her cow to um, to um, listen to her voice and to work with her, and all these things. It was one of those really just wonderful scenarios and situations. So she actually. She actually did a really good job of training and teaching her cow, and she actually used to ride it, ride her cow, like Lady Godiva. So anyway, so if you don't know about Lady Godiva, then don't worry about it. You'll learn it at some point. So you have, you have, um, so you have different um, uh, situations in life, and you know things prepare you for another thing. You know, so. This thing I I didn't I never painted my my models and stuff before because I always thought you know what's the point of painting these things you know, and then I saw the kids paint it and they had so much fun painting them like you know what? I'm gonna paint this thing. I'm gonna paint my model, I'm gonna paint my dinosaur mask because I mean cardboard is the best thing to paint on it just really is, you know when I was back at um, um at my job, I got them in the office, and uh, they let me um, paint on the bales or I do some spray painting on the bales and I got so elaborate with it and it was great 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 times. So what I did was that, you know, um, I tried not to be totally, like, you know, do too much. Where they come and be like, yo, Greg, you gotta stop doing that because, you know, you're wasting time. So, um, but I did a couple of times and it was really good. And I got permission. Someone said, do you ever be afraid of your artwork, you know? And he's right. Don't be afraid of your own artwork. Get out there and do it boldly. You know, paint. Paint them suckers. Be bold. Don't be afraid, you know? And so... So I, I I did I got a chance to just you know really enjoy this painting and really enjoying what I'm doing you know so I thought about maybe I'd put some sequins and stuff on this and just really just give it like a nice little flair to it you know I really like painting I do and so let me just go ahead and put little lines here before my battery and the light goes off the light's gonna go off any second now you know. And it's like, I've worked for many artists too in the city, and I find that, you know, it's some um, artists, everybody has their own style of how they do stuff, you know? And some people do things their way, and you know what? It's cool because at the end of the day, it's all like different people have different manifestations of what's inside them, you know? And I like that because, you know, that means that we all have a different, different things that interest us, and we're all a combination of, of Im images and ideas, and we're, you know, just people who are constantly willing to design, let our design speak for themselves, you know? And so the problem, that's the problem with when you get trained. When you get trained, it's like you are trained to follow and copy other people's design. And you get it so in your head so well that you start thinking about, like, you know, yours isn't good enough because it's not like this or that. I mean, there's basic form and basics, you know, like structures and things like that, but there's only so much you can do if you're trying to follow the design. And it's like, I, I have a hard time breaking from that, whereas my children, they don't have that problem. And that goes to the schooling, because we school our children ourselves. And so that's one of the things that makes it really interesting in terms of, like, you know, artwork and design. Oh, there goes my lights. Hold on a second. I'm going to pause it for a second.